Hi guys, welcome back to Personal Finance with Diamond Nestic, the number one place to learn about money. I'm Jennifer, and I've spent most of my life in finance. Started working at banks like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs at the age of 17, and graduated at the top of my class from NYU and Harvard Business School, studying, you guessed it, business and finance. And now I work with companies like Bloomberg, WeWork, and Walker Edison, teaching their employees all about financial literacy and wellness. Today, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of an 800 credit score. Most, probably all of you are wondering the cons of an 800 credit score. And yes, that's what I said, the cons of an 800 credit score. By the end of this video, you'll understand what we mean. You'll also understand the myth of the 800 plus credit score, the score you should actually be aiming for, and how to get yourself there. And if you stay until the very end, I'll even tell you how to get that 800 plus credit score, even though you don't need it, because I know some of you will still want one just for the sake of having it. Are you working towards an 800 plus credit score? And how's your credit journey been so far? Drop us a comment right below and let us know. So most of us know the pros of an 800 plus credit score. One, you get the best terms on borrowing, whether that's a mortgage, car loan, personal loan, or other types of debt. And two, you get access to the best credit cards. Practically every article or video you'll come across will tout these awesome benefits of an 800 plus credit score. If you dig deeper though, you'll find that the reality is you simply don't need an 800 plus. This is what we call the myth of the 800 plus. You may want an 800 plus because it's that next round number up from 799 and it just sounds so much better to say, I have an 800 or an 850 versus I have a 790 or a 799. Or perhaps because you've simply heard so much about that perfect score and you just have to have it. Like that shiny new car or that trendy new bag. But you really don't need 800 plus to access the best lending terms on borrowing, nor do you need it for those perfect credit cards. According to Beverly Hartzell, U.S. News and World Report credit card expert and consumer finance analyst, if you can get up to around a 760, you're going to get the same benefits, the same offers that someone who has an 840 score is going to get. And according to the guy who runs consumer education and advocacy at Experian, Experian is one of the three major credit reporting agencies. According to this fellow Griffin, the target credit score you should be shooting for can be even as low as 750. Because at this point, generally speaking, and I quote, there's not much use in stressing out over improving it. You'll likely qualify for the best offers. Again, this is coming from the consumer education and advocacy guy at one of the three major credit bureaus. One of the three major credit bureaus that monitors and reports on every single thing to do with your credit. This guy knows what he's talking about. And if you're still not convinced, just check this out right here. Go to those very same sources that tout about the advantages of an 800 plus credit score. And when you check out their list of top credit cards, you'll see that what the Experian guy said is true. To get approved for the credit card that's consistently ranked as the best in the industry, the city 2% back card. The minimum you need to qualify is 750. If you're thinking to yourself at this point, but Jen, I'm about to take out a new mortgage or I'm about to refinance my car or student loans. I want the best rates possible. Remember that your credit score is just one factor that lenders consider in the lending process. It's a very important factor, but it's not the only factor. One of the top reasons clients come to us is to pay off debt, to refinance it, or to buy a new home. And I can assure you, their credit score is not the only thing we work on with them because lenders look at many other factors, which might include your income, your overall debt payments versus your overall income, your savings, your down payment, whether you have a cosigner, and so on. This has been our personal experience as well. We've taken loans out and refinanced over the years, and we've always gotten the best rates from our lenders, despite having credit scores below 800, precisely because our lenders looked at all the other factors of income, down payment, and et cetera, that we just mentioned above. 
our score is over 800 plus now, and we will tell you how to get there shortly for those adamant about the journey to 800 plus. But it's only one part of your overall financial picture from the standpoint of a lender. Here's the profile of two real life 20 something clients we recently worked with on student loan refinancing. Names have been changed and numbers have been rounded for easy calculation. The one on the left, let's call her Abby. Abby makes $150,000 a year, has $375,000 of student loans, no credit card debt, emergency savings of $20,000, a co-signer, and a credit score slightly below 750. The one on the right, Anthony, Anthony makes $70,000 annually. He has $200,000 of student loans, $10,000 of credit card debt, $1,000 of emergency savings, no co-signer, and a credit score of 813. Wowzers. Abby got the better rate at a little below 3% despite the lower credit score. Anthony's was closer to 3.75%. So keep in mind, your credit score is important, but it is only one part of your overall financial health. All those other factors that we talked about, like income, amount of debt outstanding, savings, et cetera, they also come into play when it comes to getting the best credit terms. Now, if refinancing student loans is something you're considering, like the vast majority of our clients right now, be sure to check out our student loan refinancing playlist right here. It walks you through student loan refinancing pros, cons, and pitfalls as well as the top lenders in the student loan refinancing space. And if you're enjoying this video so far, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. The more love you show us, the more love YouTube shows us. And the more likely they are to push this great credit info out to the others that need it the most. So the first con of the 800 plus credit score is that it's just a myth. You simply don't need it as we've already shown you. Once you've reached 750 or 760, we like to stick to the safer side of 760. You already have access to the best rates and credit cards in the market. Now, don't get me wrong, an 800 plus is a nice to have, but it's not a necessity. It doesn't bring you any real benefits financially. The second con of the 800 plus is all the time and effort you need to invest to get there. Getting from a 650 to a 700 or 700 to a 750 is much quicker and easier than getting from a 750 to an 800 plus. The simplest way to think about it is this. When you go from eating hamburgers and fries three times a week, not that we do that, but if you did, and then all of a sudden you switch to salads every day, you'd see a significant improvement over a not necessarily very long period of time in your overall health. This is what going from 650 to 700 or 700 to 750 is like. If, however, you're already eating salad every day, putting less dressing on your salad won't make much impact on your overall health. And even when it does, it's going to take a long time. That's what it's like going from a 750 to 800 plus. So not only does going from 750 or 760 to 800 plus not bring obvious benefits, it also costs a lot of your time and effort. The third con is this. For many folks, getting an 800 plus or the perfect score simply becomes an obsession, a goal to work towards just because. There's no other reason. They even have a name for themselves, the 800 plus club. And according to CNBC, there are even the credit fanatics who boast of high scores on their dating profiles. Think of your credit score as a pass fail exam with 850 questions. Once you get past 760, our preference is for 760 rather than 750 just to play things on the safe side. But once you get past 760, you've passed the test. So why obsess over an 850 if you get nothing from it? Now, I know it's nice to boast to other people about it. Passing with an 800 plus is much better than passing with a 760. Or at least it sounds better. But is it really worth obsessing over? A healthy credit score is important. And I don't want to downplay this, especially if you plan to take out new debt in the near future. 
but 760 plus is healthy enough to get you the financial benefits that you want when it comes to credit cards and borrowing. And in our opinion, there are simply more important things in life to obsess over, like your health, your sanity, your time with family and friends, or when the next Mandalorian or Avengers is going to come out. Improving credit scores and getting on track with finances are top of mind for most of our clients right now. So if you need further guidance or encouragement, check out our playlist right here. It goes through our three-step goal setting process, the best budgeting methods and apps out there right now, as well as free templates and tutorials that you can download for free from our website to kickstart your financial journey with us today. And as always, if you find yourself hitting a wall with your finances or you're interested in working directly with us, shoot us an email at jennifer at diamondnesteg.com. In a nutshell, the credit score you should be aiming for is 760 plus, not 800 plus. But if after all this, you still want that 800 plus, as promised in the beginning of this video, here's what you need to do. One, always make your payments on time. This is the most important factor. A single missed payment has the potential to drop your credit score by double digits. Two, keep your credit utilization between five and 10%, ideally 5%. Your credit utilization is the amount of your credit limit that you actually use. This is the second most important factor. So if your credit limit is $1,000, your credit card balance should never exceed $50 to $100. And if it does, just make sure you pay it off right away. Three, improve your credit mix. Credit mix refers to the different types of credit cards and loans you have, such as personal loans, student loans, car loans, boat loans, and mortgages. Your lenders like knowing that you can handle different types of debt. So if you only have credit card debt, try taking out an installment loan, such as a car loan or a personal loan. There's also the option of a credit builder loan if you don't want to pile on new debt. We'll talk about this in another video in the coming weeks. Or perhaps you just have student loans. If this is you, try to open up a new credit card. Four, don't close your old credit cards. Based on recent surveys, the majority of folks with an 800 plus credit score have a credit history of just under 22 years. This means that based on all the accounts that are listed as open on their credit report, on average, they've held these accounts for a bit less than 22 years. That's a long time. Five, check your credit report and make sure you remove anything on there that is not correct. If you do find late payments on your credit report from some time ago, but you've been paying on time since then, you can try to get these negative remarks removed by contacting your lender and asking them very nicely to take this off and make a case for yourself because you've changed your money habits and you've now been making steady payments on time for quite some time. Your lender doesn't have to do anything, but in our experience, persistency and friendliness, it can get you a long way. If your lender refuses though, simply wait. Negative remarks generally take seven years to fall off your credit history and your credit score will naturally improve as more and more of these disappear. Now, if those weren't great tips for the journey to 800 plus, I don't know what would be. So if you haven't given us a thumbs up yet or subscribe, please do it now. And thank you so much for taking the time. And there you have it, folks. All you really need is a 760 when it comes to your credit score. But if you're still dead set on hitting that 800 plus mark, we've laid out a clear path for you to get there. Remember though, when it comes to your money and your credit, things rarely happen overnight. As I mentioned earlier, we didn't have 800 credit scores the last time we took out a mortgage a few years back. Well, guess what? Now we do. The last time I checked, it was an 823. How'd we do it? We just spent consciously, paid off our balances on time every month, and let the time pass. We didn't even do much about our utilization or credit mix. Creating good money habits and building wealth simply takes time. You can't rush it. 
Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And as always, if you have any questions, shoot an email over to us at jennifer at diamondnestig.com. We'll be back very soon with another money-saving, wealth-building video just for you.